At the end of the day, there's really no silver bullet here. Tim Hortons an iconic Canadian brand, a restaurant concept like we've never seen in Canada or the world. It's such a dominant player. But, you know, over the last number of years, it's experienced a lot of setbacks, most notably the challenges that it's been having with its with franchisees as the new ownership took over in, in 2014. Now, that's been a big challenge as well. What's sort of stumped a lot of people this year is that uh, the alternative meat uh, craze yes. was in full swing. All of these different quick service restaurants were cashing in. Tim seemed to get in in a fairly substantial way and then jumped out almost as quickly. Sure. Was, was that a strategic error in hindsight? You know, that's a great question, and there's been lots of debate as to whether they came in too quickly. And, you know, when you look at the other quick service restaurant brands, such as McDonald's and Starbucks and A&W most notably, you know, this is a very competitive market. Marketplace. This is a $60 billion market in Canada that grows around 2 to 3%. So, you know, for operators to really gain share within this marketplace, it's, it's very competitive. And a lot of the food trends that drive consumer uh, behavior and allow restaurant operators to establish that point of difference uh, is what operators are, are building on to, to create innovation. And so, you know, with the plant-based protein, a lot of operators jumped on it and they had great success. But for Tim Hortons, it may have been too quick for their customer base to move into this strategy. But it speaks to the bigger picture of identifying those food trends in the market and then making sure they fit with that brand overall. As part of this uh, Tim's, I guess, challenge they have lying ahead is to try to figure out who they are to Canadians. When I, when I think back when I started frequenting these restaurants in sure. your life, you went to Tim's for coffee and donuts. You went to McDonald's for your burger. You went to Subway or Mr. Sub for yes. your subs. And now everybody wants to do everything in one place. Yeah, and, and it's part of the landscape and how competitive the marketplace has become. And there are opportunities to evolve beyond your core. You know, part of the challenge with Tim's, especially when, uh, you know, RBI and 3G took over in, in 2014, um, there was a lot of focus on, on cost cutting and scaling back. And if you look at the uh, number of, of staff they have at head office compared to, you know, pre-2014, uh, there's a noticeable difference. So, you know, when you come into an iconic brand that has such an emotional connection with Canadians and the focus is cost cutting and scaling back, that's going to have an impact in their market performance. We've seen that through a number of different brands that start to focus on cost cutting and they lose that vision on what they mean to consumers overall. Yeah, when I think of the parent company and what's under the umbrella, whether it's Burger King, Popeyes, obviously those have been great successes. In the statement and saying that Alex Maceda will be gone in yes. March and he's leaving of his own volition, uh, they, they praise him for what he did with the Burger King brand and then they just mentioned, ah, but Tim's has been a, it's been a challenging time. Yeah, Tim's has been a challenge and you know, Alex did a great job at, at Burger King uh, through the U.S. Now they're bringing Axelin, who's also done a, a good job, um, you know, in Germany and in Europe. It and seems in, like a comparable US. challenge because for a while Burger King was always sort of the the second afterthought after the McDonald's, and people didn't really treat them seriously. Obviously, the sales have been vastly improved. Yeah, absolutely. You know, when you look at Burger King here in Canada, much smaller brand than in the U.S., but in the U.S. they've created a lot of excitement. They've got the franchisees excited. They've got consumers excited. So you know, they're starting to get that traction based on that innovation and excitement. Here in Canada, you have Tim Hortons, you have 4,800 right across the country. It's a much bigger shift that needs to happen. It's like turning a large, it's going to be a slow process. There is really no silver bullet that's going to help evolve and get this brand back on track. What about Tim's as a global brand? This is a story that always comes up and who sure. is ever running the show uh, always seems to say, we can take this Tim's success and we can export it to the world and it always seems to be these fits and starts. Yeah, they've struggled expanding into the U.S. over a number of years but they have a pretty good global growth strategy now as they expand into China and some of the Asian countries and whatnot in Latin America. So I think their strategy to expand global makes sense and they need to continue to focus on that. But there is a big fundamental challenge here at home that they really need to, to get back in order. And that's definitely starting with the, the franchisees, making sure that they've repaired that relationship. Yeah, just no more folks. negative headlines. That's what it sounds no like. More don't have headlines. any negative headlines about this brand that we're supposed to. Because all the advertising, the marketing around this brand has been about the brand that you can love, right? They're yeah. Hockey, they're everything that is Canada. They're not fighting. And they just yeah. can't seem to catch a break. I don't know. If, I know you follow Justin Bieber quite a oh, bit. Oh, now he, he, he doesn't like their new lids? <laughs> he doesn't like their on, new right? lids, right. So he came out now a bit of a rant on their new lid so you know they just they don't seem to be able to catch a, a media break over the last little while so it's really 
challenging the brand. Consumers have a whole different view of the brand. We've seen their brand strength. and loved brands just drop off a cliff over the last couple of years. So, so a lot of work to connect back with the consumers as well as the franchisees and have the franchise lead that connection back with consumers.